Thread 1.4 is here. So what? Thread is the wireless mesh protocol that underpins a huge part of the Matter Smart Home. It's not the only network that Matter Smart Home devices can use. Of course, regular old Wi-Fi, Zigbee via a Matter bridge, or even Bluetooth bridging are all possible, but Thread and Matter are inextricably linked. But like any emerging technology, Thread has had its fair share of early niggling issues. In this video, we'll be exploring Thread 1.4, and what it means for the Matter Smart Home. I'm not going to go over the full ins and outs of Thread on a technical level because we already have a whole video on that elsewhere. Link in the description or hopefully on a little card up there. I'm James, you're watching MatterAlpha.com, home of all things Matter in the Smart Home. Briefly though, Thread is a low power mesh network based on existing IP standards, which makes it easy for manufacturers to adopt and integrate into their products and makes it perfect for a smart home. So what's the big deal with Thread 1.4? Let's break it down. Number one, a unified single thread mesh network. Now this is going to sound a bit silly given that the whole point of matter was to have one single network and devices that would be able to talk to any smart home controller regardless of what manufacturer they came from. But right now, adding a border router from a different manufacturer to your matter smart home can result in multiple thread networks being created. So for instance, you'd have an Apple Home thread network created by your Apple TV and a Google Home thread network managed by your Hub Max. And the two would not talk to each other, nor would the devices that added themselves to each network talk to each other either. Thread 1.4 fixes that by standardizing the process for sharing credentials, thereby making it easier for devices to trust each other and play nicely. This will have the happy byproduct of potentially making your mesh extend further and increasing the range. Unfortunately, this is not going to work with your existing network. Google VP of Thread Network has said that it will only apply to new border set router setups, so you'll need to factory reset this if you want to benefit from that eventually once it's rolled out. Though it isn't clear if he meant just resetting the border router or every single thread sensor and device you ever connected to it. Number two, cloud connectivity. Thread 1.4 introduces a way for devices to connect directly to the cloud, to the internet via your Thread border router. What's a Thread border router? I'm glad you asked. Again, we've got an entire video on that. But one of the fundamentals of a Matter Smart Home is that devices should be locally controllable without requiring a cloud connection. And a few weeks back, I tried this to varying success. I wrote that up as an article on MatterAlpha.com if you're interested, but TLDR, they pretty much all worked from the Apple Home app itself, but within the manufacturer's app, mixed results. But anyway, the ability for devices to access the internet securely by themselves has a number of advantages without taking away the core features of a product. For instance, being able to react to weather changes without needing a separate home controller sort of automation involving weather or allowing for easier device updates. It may also allow for more reliable remote control bypassing your Matter controller again. However, before the privacy conscious among you scream and shout at me, this feature should be entirely optional. It will be optional when it's rolled out. You will be able to disable direct internet access at the border router level, so your thread devices will only be able to work locally if you so choose. Number three, Extended range and reliability. Thread 1.4 allows border routers to use both Wi-Fi and Ethernet to extend the range of a thread network, a bit like how Wi-Fi extenders work. So this half of your house might be a dead zone for thread, but by adding another border router there, you'll have an existing thread network extended over to here. And that kind of relates to point one when we talked about credential sharing between border routers. Number four, simplified onboarding and troubleshooting. So whether you're a developer or an end user, right now the thread network is a, a little bit like a black box. There's no easy way to delve into the thread configuration and diagnose any issues that you might have with a device dropping off. Thread 1.4 standardizes the methods and exposes more data, making it easier to figure out when something's wrong. The bigger your thread network is, and they can get really, really big, the more important this becomes. However, the Thread Group have said that they won't directly be releasing their own troubleshooting app, which would be really helpful, 
Rather, they're just making it easier for other developers to create one, perhaps into the existing Apple Home app. Companies like Eve or Nanoleaf already offer some version of this, though it typically requires you to have at least one of their devices on your network. So it's not a generic solution that anyone can download their app and then use it to diagnose the smart home. But this is a good step in the right direction and I'd love to see what gets developed. Number five, secure wireless onboarding. Right now you need to be physically able to access a thread device to add it to your network, either by scanning a QR code or pressing a button to confirm your connection. But what if the device is in a hard to reach place, like in the ceiling or in the wall? Well, Thread 1.4 has introduced ways to onboard a device without being physically in contact with it. And it's all about using a secure uh, message transport layer. Brilliant. So can you benefit from Thread 1.4 right now? Eh, not so fast. While the Thread 1.4 specification might have been updated, it's going to be at least a year or so before we see these updates being pushed to consumers, if at all. Manufacturers will need to update the devices to work with the new protocol, then they'll need to certify them with the Thread group, then the updates will need to be pushed out to consumers. And that includes both the controller and border router side of things, as well as the sensor side. For instance, the Matter 1.2 specification was announced in October 2023, and while IDOT announced the first Matter-compatible air purifier in January 24, it's only in September 2024, as I record this, that Apple is adding support for some of the Matter 1.2 device types to the latest iOS, notably the air purifier. I have one, it still doesn't work with the iOS app. Still, with all that criticisms that I have, I think Thread and Matter are already better than what came before, although that was setting a pretty low bar, <coughs> Z-Wave. Anyway, thanks for watching, like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more on Matter product reviews, explainers, and buying guides from myself and the team at matteralpha.com.